promoting a healthy environment. It's the air we breathe. Clean, safe water. Responsible management of our natural resources. We protect and restore for a sustainable future. Environment matters. Water's acidic, and it's so acidic that uh, fish can't live in it, uh, bugs can't live in it, and so we're, we're basically just raising the alkalinity to, to achieve a, a neutral pH. And that's helped bring this once dead stream back to life. We'll travel to West Virginia's eastern panhandle where a DEP project is helping to bring trout back to Abram Creek. Plus... Everybody's got it stacked up somewhere and you know the, the garbage men won't take it and it's a real problem for most people. Everybody knows you can recycle paper and cardboard, glass, aluminum and plastics but now you can add latex paint to the mix thanks to one local organization. Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Environment Matters. I'm Greg Adolfson. And I'm Kelly Gillenwater. It's been called some of the most environmentally beneficial work being done in West Virginia. The treatment of streams severely impacted by acid mine drainage. You know, and it's the latest success story from the DEP's Office of Abandoned Mine Lands and Reclamation. The DEP's Jake Glantz joins us now with the details. Well, Greg Kelly, the project on Abram Creek in Grant and Mineral Counties is just the latest in a series of acid mine drainage treatment projects that began in the 90s and now has revived more than 85 miles of West Virginia streams. It seeps from the ground high up in the headwaters and flows downstream, the color of strong coffee. This is what Abram Creek looks like before treatment. The water's acidic and it's so acidic that uh, fish can't live in it, uh, bugs can't live in it, and so we're, we're basically just raising the alkalinity to, to achieve a, a neutral pH. But move downstream 15 miles where it flows into the north branch of the Potomac along the Maryland border and it's a much different stream. Life is returning to Abram Creek. And now uh, fish are starting to come back and the stream's good all the time. That's happened because of a process called lime dosing. These silos hold tiny pellets of calcium oxide that are mixed slowly, a little bit at a time, into the water that is captured upstream of the site. Inside is a water wheel powered by the stream itself. It turns an auger that dumps a small amount of the calcium oxide pellets into the water. The treated water flows back out of the building and is mixed into the stream, raising the pH and neutralizing the acid. It's pretty basic really. What I do is I, I grab samples downstream to see what, what uh, results I'm getting. Um, then I come up and use a stopwatch to time the revolutions per minute that the, the uh, machine is turning. If my pH is, is below a 7.0, then I uh, just try to figure out how much it needs to be increased to get it to seven. If it's, uh, say it's an eight, you know, it's too high, then I, I do the same thing in reverse and try to slow it down so that I achieve a seven. Jim maintains the dosing sites on Abram Creek, something he checks on about three times a week. The project, which began operation in late 2010, cost nearly $845,000 to build and costs about $42,000 a year just to operate and maintain. The Abram Creek Project, along with five other similar treatment projects on other state streams, are funded through the DEP's Acid Mine Drainage Set-Aside Fund. Up to 30% of the federal grant funding received by the DEP's Office of Abandoned Mine Lands is set aside for perpetual mine water treatment. That money is invested by the state and the projects are funded using only the returns from the fund, leaving the principal intact so treatment of the affected streams can continue indefinitely. That's because once treatment begins, it must be maintained. Otherwise, the stream will quickly revert to its former lifeless state. The whole thing is flow dependent, so that's why you can't just turn them on and leave them. You have to, you have to check all the time um, because the more flow you have, um, it can work both ways. I have one, one doser where the uh, stream 
is, is good above where we treat and then right it gets bad from from old mining right at the the machine so um, on that one if we have real high flows it increases the the good water coming to the system and i get to turn the machine down i have other ones where uh, if the flow is is increased it increases the amount of, of acid mine drainage so significantly that i have to turn the system up so it's, it's the opposite, you know, so the rain event does two things uh, because of the differences in the, the sites that we're treating. But the results speak for themselves. The water quality in Abram Creek has improved to the point that brook trout, the state fish in a species that doesn't do well in polluted waters, were spotted during a recent survey, and that should continue to improve over time. A stretch of the Blackwater River, which has been treated since the mid-90s, is considered to be one of the best trout fishing areas of the state. The Abram Creek project involves five dosing sites, the three active dosers plus two other sites that use piles of crushed limestone sand. The sand is hauled by dump trucks and placed alongside the stream bank. The piles are allowed to erode gradually, slowly away into the stream, which helps to neutralize the acid. The limestone is a less potent form of treatment and does not pose a risk to the stream if a large amount of it is suddenly carried into the stream by a high water event. A recent survey by biologists found an 800% increase in the fish population at three sites that were sampled in 2009 before the start of the treatment. The number of fish species found also nearly doubled. For Environment Matters, I'm Jake Glantz. Thanks, Jake. The DEP's Office of Abandoned Mine Lands and Reclamation was created in 1981 to protect public health, safety, and property from past coal mining practices through the reclamation and restoration of land and water resources. The United States Office of Surface Mining, Reclamation, and Enforcement has proposed a new rule for the regulation of coal mining. The proposed rule would revise that agency's regulation defining material damage to the hydrologic balance outside the permit area and would require each permit to specify the point at which adverse mining related impacts on groundwater and surface water would reach that level of damage. The proposed rule would also require mine operators to collect pre-mining data at the prospective mine site to establish a baseline for the evaluation of both the impacts of mining and the effectiveness of reclamation. It would also adjust monitoring requirements to enable what the OSM considers timely detection and correction of problems associated with surface and groundwater, among other requirements. The proposed rule would apply to both surface mines and the surface effects of underground mining. DEP Cabinet Secretary Randy Huffman testified at a hearing in Washington, D.C. recently that the proposed rule was an ill-conceived, unlawful overreach that would effectively override a long-standing act of Congress and therefore should not be adopted without a congressional mandate. Secretary Huffman also went on to say that the proposed rule does not take into account the balance between protection of the environment and the nation's need for coal as an energy source, which was written by Congress into the Surface Mine Act nearly four decades ago, and would impose costly new regulatory burdens without any established necessity for them. Secretary Huffman also pointed out that the proposed rule is full of unlawful conflicts with existing state and federal clean water laws. Secretary Huffman called the proposed stream protection rule an unnecessary, uncalled for political gesture and called for the OSM Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement to withdraw the rule and abandon this rulemaking effort. The period for public comment is now over. The federal agency received more than 94,000 comments. You can find out more about the proposed rule by visiting the OSM website, osmre.gov. Work will begin soon on the removal of contaminated soil from the former Freedom Industry site in Charleston. An excavation plan has been submitted to the DEP for review. About 9,000 tons of soil will be removed from the site. Prep work may take up to two weeks, but no start date has been set. Area residents will be notified via a news release and by representatives going door to door before the work begins. For the latest information on the status of the project, please monitor our website, dep.wv.gov. 
seven West Virginia communities and two counties were recognized for their cleanup, beautification, and environmental stewardship efforts by the DEP's REAP program recently. Each community received two road signs designating it as a clean community. The grand prize winner also received $500 to apply toward additional cleanup and beautification projects. This honor went to Fayetteville this year. Clean Community Awards are presented annually. Each application is judged in several categories, including recycling and youth participation. Joining Fayetteville this year were communities of Wellsburg, Beach Bottom, New Cumberland, Chester, Wardensville, and Bluefield. Berkeley and Braxton counties received 2015 Clean County Awards with a $2,000 grand prize going to Berkeley and a $1,000 runner-up prize going to Braxton County. Clean County Awards are presented to county solid waste authorities that promote environmental stewardship through cleanup, outreach, and law enforcement. Congratulations to all the winners. And you can find out more information about how to enter your community in next year's competition by visiting our website, dep.wv.gov. Coming up, celebrating America Recycles Day. We'll visit one local organization that's turning unwanted paint into a rainbow of new colors while helping individuals reach their goal of home ownership. Plus, food waste makes up more than one-fifth of our nation's garbage. We'll show you some ways to reduce what ends up in the trash and what some groups are doing to make sure it doesn't go to waste. Those stories and more when Environment Matters continues. We're back after these messages. 